game called how many basic tumblr instagram aro things can i fit into <laughs> one shot at one time um okay fairy lights check uh the great wave poster not quite visible but it's there <laughs> check can can check uh short girl check overalls yes um around glasses uh well who can forget there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have the winning shot right here! Boop! Welcome to the modern world. This is a poem. Hi, it's Divya! G. What does the G stand for? Boop! It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of an entity is a poet. Hi! I'm a side channel that is also a main channel. I like to mix aesthetics with social commentary on things that are important to me in life and to the world. Like memes. <laughs> Unsubscribe! <laughs> Some people call it modern poetry. Some people call it art. Some people call it Tumblr Insta poetry. And some people call it My caps lock is broken and no longer works But one thing is for certain You can't complete your insta arty look without a copy of milk and honey Your can can bag in the background and your <laughs> sweet potato avocado toast with chia seeds on top <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The princess saves herself in this one. I wonder what it's about. By Amanda Lovelace. Did you know that Amanda Lovelace was in college when she published this? College. Girl was doing bits! Lovelace uses the <laughs> extended metaphor in this one of your classic fairy tale story of the princess locked up in a tower throughout sections of the books and how it kind of aligns with parts and aspects of her own life. In terms of themes and topics for this one, we have grief, motherhood, familial relationships, sisterhood, there's a lot of death, there's love, and what it means to be a woman. Lovelace likes to manipulate the form of her poetry, both to render the aesthetics, but also just to kind of capture the like, visual form and, and meaning of her poetry, if that makes sense. Um, some people call it overuse of the entry key. In my opinion, my backside, my behind, my tush is <laughs> firmly planted on defense. I don't know why I'm sitting on a fence, but I'm sitting on it and my, my butt's not moving. My favorite poems in this anthology centers mostly around grief and also this tumultuous mother-daughter relationship that she has. Grief clung to her like an old, itchy, faded, ill-fitting hand-me-down dress. Death wound itself around her bones like a piece of red ribbon. Months after my mum died, I found the book she was reading last with the yellowing receipt still tucked inside, marking her place, and it finally hit me. You'll never get to finish this particular book. You will never get to start or finish another book ever again. You will never get to see me graduate from college. You will never meet the love of my life. You will never be there for my wedding. You will never read these words. We will never, ever, ever sit on the back porch and swap ghost stories over steaming coffee mugs ever, ever, ever again. The isolated words and as my past English teacher would say, in Jean-Paul, <laughs> reads like a mental pause, like with each line compounding upon the previous, the lack of spaces feels uncomfortable and tight, especially compared to the poem literally opposite of it. Like the words themselves winding around, like taking space off the page, mimicking how death itself encompasses the speaker's entire body or life. Face's bitter regret is evident in this poem. Like, if you combine like the anaphora with declarative, you will never get to with a verb. I feel like it really puts across this sort of finality of life. 
I mean, the tone in this section is somber and regretful towards this childhood so consumed with death that the author never really got a chance to live. There's this poem in particular, right? And this is like fill in the blank. Poetry is in space anything you want to be, and it makes you question what is poetry? I think that the problem that a lot of people have with milk and honey and the princess saves herself in this one is that it's written in free verse in such simple language that it almost doesn't even feel like poetry it kind of just feels like statements like some of these statements could be tweets for example <coughs> food is not the enemy society is everyone i love these if that wasn't your facebook status in 2010 when david Tennant regenerated into matt smith <laughs> don't even at me though and with the love poems if you can't relate <laughs> like me then it comes across as a little bit cringy because you know hashtag can't relate and we have milk and honey it's a lot darker than the princess saves herself in this one Core explores cultural identity, especially in relation to her family, like sexual abuse, she explores rape, she explores kind of what it means to be a woman in modern day century and how to define womanhood. At the same time, simultaneously, Core uses a lot more imagery in her writing, but it also suffers from obvious statement syndrome <laughs> stay i whispered as you shut the door behind you no i whispered as tfl took five pounds sixty from my oyster card balance <laughs> the way they leave tells you everything i was dolce and gabbana but you were on a budget The point is, the statements can be quite simple. In one way, it's accessible and you don't have to do too much thinking to find the meaning. It's quite obvious, it's quite blunt. But on the other hand, the feminism, like people praise this book for feminism. In my opinion, like the things that she was saying weren't very revolutionary. They were kind of just obvious facts that a lot of people in our generation agree with. I'm not saying poetry has to be revolutionary, right? Because a lot of people do connect with it. I'm just saying that these books were like a celebration spot, yeah? And I was getting a lot of bounty, but I just wanted the Maltesers. Some people claim about the emittance of capsule letters in her writing. I feel like that's not really an issue because if anything, it's really more of an ode to Gurmukhi scripture. And if anything, the lack of capsule letters makes the words flow a lot more easier. If anything, it makes her message seem more vulnerable and just like more... It's just, just more raw, Melissa! Um, my favourite poem is Woman of Colour. So, our backs tell stories no books have the spine to carry. Um, and it's really the comparison between the daily burdens and struggles that we have to face are so great that words are inadequate in capturing this essence. They're evidently personal, right? And they deal with a lot of heavy topics, but the problem for me is sometimes both form and content are missing. Forget Madeline. What? What am I reading? In the words of my actual brother, if I got any of these poems in my GCSE unseen poetry exam, I'd be screwed because there is nothing to say. Whether you like this form of confessionalist free verse or not, 
I do admire the fact that they're kind of challenging the gatekeepers of poetry. Sometimes poetry can be so intimidating for people because there's this air of sort of haughtiness. It's intimidating, right? And at least these authors creating poetry that's accessible for more people, you know? It's, it's kind of like poetry for people who don't like poems. And that is... And the H2O hydration. Okay, so these are the two mainstream ones. Let's talk about some other underrated quote unquote Tumblr Insta poetry, right? Yes, okay, we got these two. Um, Graffiti by Savannah Brown. I'll tell you straight up that I am biased. I have no shame. I love Savannah Brown. Savannah Brown as a poet, as a writer, She's so lyrical with the way that she writes, okay? I feel like her poetry is so enriched with, with images and metaphors. Some people might think, wait, this is just John Green pretentious angsty teen. Well, if it's John Green pretentious angsty teen, then so be it. I'm, I dig it. We have a skinny legend. These poems are written at the very cusp of adulthood in this weird black hole between being a child and being not. I feel like these poems are very personal in the sense that Savannah wrote this for herself. She didn't write this for other people to read, right? When I'm reading these poems, I get this feeling that we're kind of looking into her trapped inside her own headspace and battling this sense of existentialism. Personally, I feel like Savannah is like mm, the cream of the crop, molto bene in terms of spoken poetry, right? If you feel a weird sense of disconnect when you're reading the poems, just honestly just go to her YouTube, look at her poetry playlist and just listen to her speak. I feel like when she speaks, it just adds a whole nother dimension. Okay, I'm just transported into another era. I don't even know who I am anymore. I wasn't a fan of all of the poetry, but my favorite one was Moles don't think about space or small talk, right? As the poem progresses, Brown mimics the kind of overthinking process on page through both form and content, right? I like it because I relate to it, you know? Moles are peaceful creatures that live a simple existence, right? They're, they're hidden underground and sometimes we also want to hide within ourselves and from external society and hide from ourselves even like they don't have this narcissistic need to be significant in life or have the pressure to matter or be someone even when they live on this this vast earth unless they're the underminer <coughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to our last book bottleneck dreams by me the poet and it is the one and only book that has capital letters. Oh a rare sighting no. indeed. The poetry in this has a very whimsical, youthful, wanderlust, stargazing type of essence to it. Primary focus for this collection of poems is memories and feelings attached with, you know, love of our youth still can't relate okay hear me out this sounds kind of weird but these are the types of books that you read if you like colors by horsey okay so for me cheers resonated with me because it speaks about teenagers methods of escapism right whether it's drugs or alcohol or other means we crave short-term euphoria and we glorify lives of like reckless adolescence you know, life is short and these thrills that we're seeking, they're kind of empty and they're kind of meaningless. Like, I like it because it balances while well, there's a certain beauty to these experiences, like, they don't last. Your Snapchat story's gonna dissipate in 24 hours, boo. I would like to know your opinions on modern poetry, like, do you read it? And <laughs> do you think her talk is overrated? I had such a good upload schedule, right, for like a month. Um, and I have three really big projects for YouTube. Oh, they're not, they're not that big projects. It'll take me a long ass time to edit. 
but I honestly I'd rather spend longer making a nice video for you guys than just uploading trash each week long story short I'll try and upload on a Sunday or a Friday or a Saturday every week but I can't promise because I have uni commitments so my upload schedule is gonna be spread but we all knew this sis we be new okay so amazing <laughs> Bye. I'm gonna sleep. When I'll see you again. Hate that song. Boop. It is the truth. Universally good. Universal good. Good. Yeah. Boop. It is the truth. Universally. Universally. What? Boop. The entire summer, I've been sat at my computer, right? And I feel like I'm just turning into a vulture. Just look at this posture like nerd neck and the fact that i'm doing computer science just doesn't help this at all Boop. how'd you pronounce hit Boop. i just want the word fam Boop. you'll have to excuse the wind because honey we got a big storm coming <laughs> now that's a dead reference Boop. court Oh my, what the, how did the door just close? When I closed the door, but... Fam, there's a ghost in this house, I don't even 